Hi guys, this is Mrs. Klein again. And Mr. Creighton. Hey gang, we're here with your uh, fourth podcast of the of the unit that deals with Rome entitled The Legacy of Rome. You're going to find all this information on pages 67 through 71 in your history book. You should have that podcast note sheet out with you because you are filling that out. You're making your own personal study guide that's going to help you for your unit test that's going to be coming up. Um, and in addition to being prepared for the podcast quiz and the unit test, some of the information in this lesson will also be really helpful to you when you are working on finishing up your first performance assessment, that eulogy about Rome. Okay, all right. In the last section, you guys, we learned about the achievements of the Romans in the arts, law, engineering, and government. Okay, all right. In this lesson, you were going to be talking about the lasting achievements of the Roman Empire. So just a reminder, we're going to go through the terms and names. The first term you need to know is mosaic. The second is stoicism. And the third is aqueduct. Remember, whenever you hear this sound... It means you have a vocabulary term. Okay, uh, we've got the same big idea for the whole unit, and by now you should be really familiar with this, you guys. The influence of an empire often lives on even after that empire falls or declines. We're going to find out even a little bit more about that in this particular lesson. All right, we have the same essential questions as we've had for the last three podcasts. The first essential question, does power equal influence? How do empires become powerful and influential? What internal and external factors lead to the downfall of empires? Okay, what remains or lives on after an empire falls or declines? And finally, what is the primary reason for the fall of Rome? Okay, all right, the first, less, the first chunk of this lesson, you guys, is entitled The Impact of Roman Culture. If you have your books open, you can follow along and find this information on pages 67 through 68. Here's the question you should be thinking about. Okay, how did Roman culture influence later societies, even like our own? Okay, all right, here we begin. The Romans borrowed from the Greeks to develop aspects of their culture. Roman artists, thinkers, and writers combined Greek ideas and arts with their own ideas to create Roman styles. These styles influenced many later societies. Roman artists popularized, popularized a type of art called mosaic. A mosaic is a picture made out of many small colored tiles or pieces of glass. Roman artists also became skilled at sculpture. They adopted the realistic style of sculpture created by the Greeks. The Romans also borrowed much of their philosophy from the Greeks. Many Romans followed the philosophy of Stoicism, which was developed by the Greek thinker Zeno. Stoicism stressed the importance of duty and helping each other and society. It asked people to take an active role in public affairs. The belief of Stoicism helped build a strong sense of citizenship among Romans. Okay. As the Romans conquered Europe, the Roman language of Latin spread. Latin influenced many languages spoken today. Spanish, Italian, French, Portuguese, and Romanian are based on Latin. In addition, more than half of all English words are based on Latin. Okay, you guys, you should be able to answer this question. What were three ways Roman culture influenced later society? Our next focus is going to be on agri or architecture and engineering feats. You can find this on page 69. The question I want you guys to be able to, think, to be thinking about as we're reading through this is what advan advances did the Romans make in engineering? Roman engineers made many advances in architecture and building. Roman Builders used arches, vaults, and domes to create higher and larger buildings than ever before. An arch is a curved opening that holds up a building. The Romans used arches to build large buildings like the Colosseum, a giant outdoor stadium. Roman builders also used arches to build aqueducts. These are bridge-like structures that bring fresh water into cities and towns. A vault is an arched brick or stone ceiling or roof. A dome is a round roof with many sides. Many modern buildings, including the U.S. Capitol and many state capitals, use arches, domes, and vaults. And I want to attest to the fact, you guys, like I do a lot of traveling, travel around the country. I go to every capital I can, and there's nothing more beautiful, I think, in any one of the states if you go into the capitals. Like the capitol in Sacramento, I was in Boston over the summer as well. Absolutely are architectural wonders, but they're also incredibly beautiful. All right, so in addition to this, you guys, the Romans protected and strengthened their empire by improving transportation. They built some 50,000 miles of roads. Many of these roads were built to help the Roman army move more quickly and easily. 
Many modern highways in Europe follow routes first laid out by the Romans. I thought I drove a lot this summer on you know, 11,000 miles, but 50,000 miles of roads were designed to help bring the empire together. Okay, all right, and then like we said, these many highways in Europe follow the same routes that were uh, first established by the Romans. Okay, what three building styles did the Romans use most often? You should be able to answer that question. Okay, the final section we'll be going through is contributions to religion and law. You can find this on page 70 and 71. The question you should be thinking about, how did the Romans contribute to religion and law? Romans contributed to religion by supporting Christianity and helping it grow. Roman rulers eventually made Christianity the official religion of the empire. After the Western Roman Empire fell, Christianity continued to spread in the West. Okay, one of Rome's most lasting contributions was its system of laws. Roman laws promoted many principles that are important to the legal systems of the United States and other countries today. These principles include equal treatment under the law and the notion that a person accused of a crime is innocent until proven guilty. The Romans also promoted the system of represent representative government that many nations use today. When Rome was a republic, it created various assemblies, including a senate, to make laws and represent the views of the people. In the United States today, the House of Representatives and the Senate act as represent representative assemblies for the people. Many other nations have similar forms of representative government. The question you guys should be able to answer in your head right now, what contributions did the Romans make to the area of law? Okay, you guys, I want to remind you, you hopefully have been filling out your podcast notes, okay, as you're listening to all of these podcasts. You also by now have hopefully started on your study guide for our unit test on Rome, which is going to be coming up kind of sooner than you know. The best part about these podcasts is you can go back and forth and listen to them as many times as you want. You can look at those podcast note sheets and you'll have that study guide that's going to be able to help you when we have our first unit test. Please don't forget, you still are going to have a podcast vocabulary quiz tomorrow based on the vocabulary for this unit, those three terms. Um, what are they again, Mr. Creighton? Mosaic, Stoicism, and Aqueduct. All right, you guys, this concludes your fourth and final podcast for our unit on Rome. Gotta go. Have a great day.